Hello, my name is Lukáš Šrpa and it's my pleasure to present you a paper about models of agent environment interaction. It's a joint work with my colleagues Pavel Rytíř and Rostislav Horčík. So it's usually the case that in a remote scenario the agent is not acting in a static environment. So to somehow model the situation so we have a two actor model so we have the agent who is applying the action and we have the environment uh, that is applying events so as events we can imagine for instance acts of nature or actions of other agents the thing is that we can reasonably assume that the agent is able to uh, produce plans that are conflict free and to execute those. On the other hand, if there is also environment that is applying events, so that it might easily lead to conflict between actions and events because they are not cooperating with, uh, with each other. So one way to deal with these conflicts is just extension definition of outcomes for each permissible combinations of actions and events. So this is, however, quite impractical. So since the number of these combinations can be pretty huge. So just to give some motivation, we have three case study. The first one is where we have an AUV that is trying to collect the resources and we have a ship which is passing through the area so the ship is not controlled by the agent so that the movement of ship can be described by events so that they are just action of the environment and the thing is that if a ship runs over the AUV the AUV is destroyed so the second case study concerns a scenario where we have a hero who has to navigate through the dungeon where he or she has to face traps and monsters so the monsters can move. So the monsters are not controlled by the hero, but they are somehow moving. This is just the action or events in the environment. So the hero can pick up a sword if he or she finds it, and the hero can use the sword to kill monster. On the other hand, if the hero is empty-handed, so that the monster can kill empty-handed hero. With regards to traps, the hero can disarm traps, but must be empty-handed to do so. If a hero performs any other action than disarm trap, if the hero is uh, in the room with a trap, the trap might trigger and kill the hero. The first st case study concerns a situation where we have two teams of UAV, the blue one and the red one, that are competing for resources, the green ones. And once a resource is collected, by one of the actor, so the other one can, can no longer collect it. And if both actors try to collect the resource at the same time, only one of them succeeds. So, and there is a 50% chance just to decide which actor will succeed to collect that resource. Now, we can, for instance, like in the chess game, so that we can model the action environment interaction in the way that actions of the agents are followed by the events of the environment. And we can just consider the set of independent actions and the set of independent events. So this is good to handle conflicts between ships and AUVs, right? Because the AUVs it's in turn just moves in the front of the ship and the ships in its turn can run over it. The thing is that if we just consider independent actions or events, so that we don't support chain movements of entities. So which means, for instance, if we have monster one, which is going from location one to location two, and the other monster, which is going from location two to location three. So these two move actions are not independent, but intuitively can be done in a single step, right? And most, more importantly, so that this model does not correctly handle interactions between hero and monster in the sense, for instance, that if the hero with the sword moves to a room with a monster, so he or she can kill the monster before the monster has a chance to run away. On the other hand, so if the hero, empty-handed hero, moves to the room with a trap, so then the trap might just trigger, not giving the chance to the hero to disarm it. And of course for correct actions, so that we don't really have the situation 50-50, but one agent which uh, whose turn 
comes first, we will just collect the resource and that's it. So this is not a desirable behavior according to domain specification. So to deal with chain movement of entities so that we somehow can extend the notion of action independence to notion of action compatibility. So that all independent actions or events are compatible. But also there is another condition, the necessary one, that an action event can't be a global error, or in other words, can't invalidate a precondition for a potentially compatible action event, so it might be considered as compatible. So it does not necessarily have to, but it, it can. But I mean, still, this point is not handled, because this is the issue with just interleaving action and event turns. So, that the idea is that the agent's actions and environment's events are applied simultaneously. The thing is, however, how to deal with incompatible actions and events, right? Because we can reasonably assume that the agent will just select compatible actions and then the environment will select compatible events, but between each other, so it might not be the case. So just to solve, to resolve the conflict, so we can define what is called action choice function, which gives the probability that the action is selected against the event. Of course, in the paper, so we are just considering pairs, action event, that has to be resolved in more general, in more general scenario, so that uh, it might be the case that we need, uh, let's say, much more complex action choice function, but just for simplicity, we just uh, focus on pairs. And the good news is that we can actually handle these interactions between hero monsters, hero trap, and also for the collect actions, because we just uh, define the action choice function according to domain specification. Yet there is another issue. For instance, if we have an AUV, moving to a location just in front of ship and the ship running which runs over the AUV. The thing is that initially we might or the environment might select an event which just moves the ship to the next location. But if at the same time the AUV just moves there as well, so that we somehow need another event which is move and destroy. Right? Now we can handle it by introducing what we call replacing function. So it says that if an action or event is selected alongside with another event or action, so it can be replaced. So what it means that if we select both move a UV in front of ship and move ship to the same location, then we can just rename move ship to rename move ship and destroy a UV event. Right? And now we are done with this model, we are able to deal with all the requirements for our case studies. Now to make things a bit more complicated, we also consider durative actions and events. We just focus on PDDL 2.1 representations, on the other hand we use uh, discrete timelines uh, to model the interaction between agent and environment. And in each time stem we First, check the preconditions of actions and events, and then we apply effects of these actions and events. Now, we extended our case study of the resource hunting domain to introduce a combat variant of it, in which we have different distances between locations. We have some constraints that at most one UAV can be at the same location at the same time and an AUV can shoot down another AUV if they are close enough. Now, how we can resolve conflicts between durative actions and events? Because the action choice function can do so only if the action and events start at the same time, right? So if they are already being executed so that we still ha have to somehow resolve the conflict. So we may introduce what we call conflict resolution function to handle conflicts between actions and events. To simply decide in a similar fashion as with action choice function whether the action or events will pre prevail in a given time step. So what also can happen that a precondition of an action and events becomes invalidated during its application. 
So what we can do, we can just terminate the action or event. So which is okay for shooting down UAV because that UAV will no longer be able to do anything. On the other hand, it's not very good if another AUV is just blocking its destination location. So that the better option is just to suspend that action. It is of course practical. On the other hand, it might lead to more complex conflicts. So because multiple AUVs might be waiting to enter the same location, for instance, so that these conflicts will simply become more complex. And to quickly wrap it up, there is a clear correlation between expressivity and engineering effort that is required uh, for a given model. And of course, things can get much more complicated in temporal settings. So as, as, as a rule of thumb, so it is always better to use simpler model if possible, since we believe that also planning techniques might be more efficient for simpler models. Thank you for your attention.